All right, my friends, we need to have a talk about perfectionism. If you're new here, my name's Scott. I'm a licensed therapist here in the beautiful state of Utah. Um, in this video, I'm going to talk about toxic perfectionism. I don't like that word, by the way, toxic. It's overused. But in this case, it is accurate. Um, but uh, the word toxic is definitely overused, for sure. And uh, perfectionism definitely is toxic. I mean, at least people are using the word toxic correctly, unlike the word phobia these days. Um, but in this video, I'm going to talk about... Um, Toxic perfectionism, how it's uh, kind of ruining your life and your relationships, and how it is fueled by criticism, and that we live in a culture of criticism, and it's really wearing people down in terms of their mental health, their mental health, the constant criticism, and I see this in relationships, like, uh, you know, romantic, romantic relationships, marriages, and people are just overly critical of each other, um, and I may be biased in this way. But um, I feel like the wives generally are a lot more critical of the husbands than the other way around, generally. And I often find that moms are too critical of their children. They're way too critical and that moms are usually more perfectionistic these days and more controlling this way. Trying to control their kids and criticize them constantly and it creates perfectionism. And yeah, it's, it's, uh, perfectionism is just destructive. Uh, I think people hold a lot of myths in their mind about perfectionism. One being... Uh, that there's some sort of end game that uh, perfectionism can be satisfied that if you're if things are exactly how they should be or people live up to your expectations or or um, if things are exactly how they're supposed to be that we'll feel satisfied and happy and everything's fine and it never works it, it never ever works uh, it, uh, people never feel satisfied with perfectionism it always self perpetuates in fact the more you strive for perfection the more you're going to find things that are wrong right uh, the second myth that I see is that perfectionism is helping people be better, whether it's yourself or somebody else, that criticizing somebody like your kids is helping them be better. That's false. That, uh, and so, and again, I hear this from parents a lot, especially moms who say, well, you know, I'll bring it up and be like, seems like uh, there's a lot of criticism and uh, very critical. Oh, well, that's what helps them be better. And I'm like, well, why aren't they better then? Why aren't they getting better? And why are they progressively deteriorating? And, um, and, uh, what I find with perfectionism, right, is it just comes with a lot of shoulds and a lot of supposed to be's, which, which translates to unrealistic, uh, expectations that are detached from reality. And so, uh, perfectionism and fueled by criticism really becomes destructive and toxic to relationships. Um, people are, well, are going to have a hard time connecting and being intimate with each other and trusting Right and vulnerable with each other. If there's a lot of criticism, as long as as if like if you're a person who offers a lot of criticism in a relationship, you're always going to have a rift between you and the people around you, and that's just the facts. They're not going to open up to you. They're not going to trust you. Um, they're not going to. Um, they're not just not going to go there because you're too critical, right? And so again, one of these myths of criticism is that it's uh, helping people be better. It's not. Uh, that's nonsense. Uh, let it go. Uh, get realistic. Get honest and realistic. Like, I'll tell you what helps kids be better, for example, is praise, appreciation, and validation. Those are the things that help them be better, not you did this wrong, you did that wrong, you did this wrong, right? Perfectionism is like, it's like giving people the white glove treatment in their life. Like, oh, you think you did a good job on things, huh? <coughs> Right and and going around and and seeing where they missed a spot, and it's destructive. And what happens too is the fear of criticism creates perfectionism. And what is the what is the purpose of trying to make things perfect? Uh, I can't I can't think of one. I think it's just a uh, um, so I, I think it's just a fear. I think it's just an anxiety. So let's say that you have a very critical, overly critical, perfectionistic parent. I, I run into these all the time. Uh, they're overly critical. They're too they're too much of a perfectionist, and they're overly critical of their child because that's what helps them be better, and all sorts of other nonsense uh, because they have high standards. That's the other one that I hear all the time. I hear that one like people are reading it from a script. Oh well, we have high standards, and and by the way, I'm going to digress for half a second. My response to that is I also have high standards. Believe me, I do. 
for kids, but I also have a high tolerance for mistakes, failures, and setbacks uh, because they're a part of life and they're a necessary part of growth and learning. And it's unrealistic and in fact destructive to treat a child as though they're not allowed to make mistakes because that's what perfectionism is. Okay, And so um, I don't know, I disagree that perfectionism is having high standards. <laughs> um, and so uh, take that one behind the barn and shoot it, please. That one's got to go. Um, I strongly dislike that one. Uh, but as I was saying, let's say that you have like a parent who's very overly critical of the kids and the kids have poor mental health and the kids are always hiding things from that parent because they're sick, they're tired of being criticized. Um, they're, they're struggling with their grades, they're struggling with their mental health, they're struggling in most aspects of their life. And the parent is, is baffled. What is going on, right? But usually that parent had a parent above them that did the exact same thing. And if you ask that parent, right? Like, were your parents overly critical? Oh, yeah, I hated it. <laughs> and it's like, then why are you doing it to your own kids? It's just that it's an insight, awareness, and conscientiousness, man. Like, you can easily fall into destructive and toxic behaviors, even the same ones that were enacted onto you that you hated, and you can turn around and do it to somebody else, and you may not even realize or be aware that you're doing it, which is why I talk about, like, awareness, conscientiousness, insight, uh, those big three, man. I mean, I'm I'm really heavy on this. Uh, practice insight, practice awareness, practice conscientiousness. So in this whole dynamic of um, right of criticism and perfectionism, I also think in there you we have to talk about expectations, right? Like perfectionism creates a set or series of extremely unrealistic expectations of how the world is supposed to go of how other people are supposed to act and uh what if you are levying really unrealistic expectations onto other people as well as yourself you're going to be miserable your relationships are going to suck uh and it's it's just going to be destructive it, and it's just it keeps going the more that you feed perfectionism the worse it gets so to me here's here's kind of your quick step-by-step -step guide very quick step-by-step -step guide, under 10-minute video on YouTube. People have short attention spans. Uh, <laughs> so number one, you got to recognize and admit and acknowledge that perfectionism is extremely destructive. And and like you can do you can do a journal assignment. I love this journal assignment for anything. How is perfectionism uh, uh, affecting my work? my personal happiness, my self-esteem, my romantic relationship, my relationship with my friends, uh, my physical health, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? And write in detail about how perfectionism is influencing all those aspects of your life, okay? You want to create the belief that perfectionism is, in fact, your enemy. It's not your friend. It's not like, it's not like you have this compliance officer that's helping you line up your life so that everybody's happy, it doesn't work. Perfectionism does not create happiness. It creates misery. Okay. There's your mantra. Perfectionism doesn't create happiness. It creates misery. That's it, right? Because it is. And it does. So what you want to do is, is recognize all the areas in which uh, perfectionism kind of pervades your life and affects your life or has a negative or, or destructive influence in your life. And then uh, you, you just you want to get busy really noticing its influence all the time and remembering Perfectionism does. Perfectionism doesn't make me happy. It doesn't create happiness. It creates misery, and and uh, <clears throat> do that over and over and over again, and you will find perfectionistic urges, almost like oh, obsessive compulsive urges, very similar, pressing you to take marching orders, get in line, do the thing, uh, yell at the person, uh, uh, be unhappy because this is here instead of here right? Or because the world is not living up to your expectations. Get angry, get upset, right? And uh, you got to notice those urges. And frankly, you got to sit with that discomfort and be like, no, <laughs> I'm not doing that. I, already, I tried doing that. I listened to you and it was a nightmare. So no, screw you. I'm not listening to you. And you can distract yourself. You can change the station. What you don't, you want to do something different. Okay. Over time, it'll get easier. You'll become You'll become less perfectionistic. You could try an experiment too. Like, let's say that you um, uh, tend to approach your relationships uh, with perfectionism, and you recognize like this is not very helpful. Um, 
and maybe maybe it is kind of harming my my relationship with my kids or my spouse or whatever spend two weeks deliberately being appreciative and validating uh, four weeks preferably but do it for at least two and see if anything changes do an experiment see what you get out of it right i guarantee you if you do it for a month if you just become much more appreciative and validating um, and let things go your relationship is going to be a million times better and what else what, what else do we need out of life than than these positive um, really deep rich uh, relationships where we just we're close and we care about each other what what on earth could be more important than that right in my world, almost nothing, okay? Um, so, anyways, there you have it. Perfectionism. It's deadly. <sighs> Thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe while you're here, please. And, um, yeah, hit the like button. Leave a comment. I appreciate the viewer questions and all that. Uh, so, anyways, you know what to do. Notification bell, blah, blah, blah. We'll see you in the next one.